Welcome to the War Room. I'm your host, Roger Stone, with my colleague, the incredibly well-dressed Owen Schroyer. Uh, and we are uh, on top of the latest gambit by the Democrats to turn the tables in the Me Too movement. Now, Owen, I watched that press conference of the Trump victims the other day, uh, and my impression was that the women were stilted, very clearly coached, uh, and the whole thing had a bogus feel. They did not look to me like the even the kind of women that Donald Trump would have assaulted. In some cases, the president says he's never met a number of these women. I give full credit to Alex Jones, who months ago said this was coming. The instant the Weinstein scandal broke and the Democrats' dirty laundry started to unravel, it was Alex Jones who said they're going to recycle the phony charges of sexual assault against the president. They're going to try to harness the energy uh, released by the Weinstein revelations to take down the president. And that's exactly what has transpired. And then if you have Bill O'Reilly with this tape that he's saying he has of a woman being offered money to come forth uh, with allegations against President Trump on top of the already admitted forged signature on the yearbook that was admitted by Gloria Allred's client. I mean, Roger, this just has this just has phony fraud, political witch hunt written all over it, and they don't even care that they're putting real victims of sexual assault under the bus on this one. Well, and very clearly, they are prepared to sacrifice their own. Now, uh, in the case of Al Franken, recognize that he has not resigned. He has only said that he is going to resign. And then yesterday, in what was clearly a, a very orchestrated move, former Minnesota Governor Arnie Carlson, for whom I have a high regard, called for Franken to stay on in the Senate based on the fact that Roger Stone coached uh, Leanne Tweeden, the woman who was the first sexual assault accuser of Senator Franken. Once again, to make this abundantly clear, since I no longer have a Twitter feed on which to clarify this, I have never met, spoken to, or communicated in any way with Lee Ann Tweeden. I do not know the lady. Uh, the inference that uh, because I have appeared on KABC's uh, John Phillips radio show that Phillips, a co-worker of Tweeden, is my source, is emphatically false. My only role in this entire matter is reporting it for Infowars.com. And in this case, we did so almost six hours before the mainstream media. But that did not stop the out-of-work actor Tom Arnold from claiming that Stone and Phillips coached Tweeden, a lie, uh, and that he would produce proof of this. Well, Fetzo, lay it on us. Where's your proof? Where's the documentation of this stunning falsehood? You've got nothing. But you did successfully prank the former governor of Minnesota. To their credit, the Minnesota uh, uh, Star Tribune, pardon me, the Minneapolis Star Tribune, when I brought uh, my denial to their attention, added it to their story. But I think it was Benjamin Franklin who said that a lie is halfway around the world before the truth even puts its pants on. And that is the case. You can now go online and you will see literally dozens of stories repeating the fake news that we at InfoWars and that I specifically coached Lee Ann Tweeden. Never met the woman. 
Uh, I'm calling Tom Arnold out because now he's resorted to uh, cyber stalking me, telling people where I eat dinner in Manhattan and urging people to confront me. I believe that violates Twitter's guidelines. Owen, why hasn't this bit man been banned? He is fomenting violence against people on Twitter, very specifically against their guidelines. Yeah, that's strange how that works, how, how Tom Arnold doesn't have to go by the Twitter guidelines and all the death threats against Trump. And now you've got people running against Elizabeth Warren, Dr. Shiva, Idi Ray receiving death threats. So, yeah, it's funny how a conservative and you didn't let's be clear, you did not threaten anyone. You did not make any violent threats or any wrong statements in your tweets. You simply just made tweets that, well, irked some people in the liberal media, quite frankly. But I think the only answer is obvious here, Roger. You have to own Twitter for, for the guidelines to actually be withheld here. Well, that's uh, coming. As I have already said, uh, I'm going to be teaming with uh, my friend Milo and others to file the mother of all lawsuits. In fact, I'd go so far to say multiple lawsuits uh, and we're going to vigorously pursue twitter but i must tell you owen they've already announced that their new guidelines are coming down in december so the truth is i think i just got censored here roughly 60 days before everybody else uh, they want to silence all conservative voices when the people they should be silencing are people like uh, Tom Arnold, who advocates violence. I was dining with two friends, one uh, an African-American, the other a uh, a uh, Caucasian. But he referred to my companions as ebony and ivory. I think that's racist, don't you? Well, if it was the other way around and you made a statement like that, it would certainly be racist. But if it comes from the lips of a good liberal you know, they can't possibly be racist. They're the anti-racists. Well, look, Tom Arnold has an upcoming gig at the Comedy Store on Sunset Boulevard, and I gather ticket sales are not going particularly well. So he has to grab on a little bit of my celebrity. Uh, he obviously has watched the Netflix documentary, Get Me Roger Stone, multiple times. He blames me for everything he sees wrong in Donald Trump. He doesn't understand that Trump's his own man and that only Donald Trump decides what Donald Trump will do. But I'm getting fed up by his cyber stalking and the fact that I was held to a very different standard than he was. He, on the other hand, is out of work and I'm not. So that's that. Well, hey, this is just another piece of evidence that you can use in these lawsuits against Twitter that clearly shows that the guidelines mean nothing. It's all about your political beliefs and who you are as to what and who they're going to censor. But, you know, it's funny because I'm thinking Tom Arnold, Roger Stone, what's the why? Why is he stalking you? What is his what's the deal here? There's a weird dynamic going on here, Roger. It happened last night. InfoWars did live coverage of the Alabama Senate race. All of our detractors and haters were watching our coverage. They weren't watching anyone else. They were watching us. These people are obsessed with us. The people the that hate us that are obsessed with us. I think Tom Arnold is just obsessed with you, Roger. No, I think the reason that Tom Arnold is stalking me, Owen, is because I love Roseanne Barr. <laughs> she is of the best, a patriot and a great, great woman. Obviously, he couldn't hold on to her, but I think it's my admiration for her that's driving him crazy. Well, you've certainly been successful in driving him crazy, and he's probably thinking about you right now. He may even be tuned in. So we say hello, Tom Arnold, as we go to break, as he is continuing to stalk Roger Stone. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with The War Room. Guess what? He helped run a bank funding not 
overseas Well, you think that Hitler got his tank money, Poppy Hitler made a killer and then Prescott made a killer and Congratulations, the Bush family got millions Woo. That's a lot of loot now Time to turn it up now, ain't no turning back now Prescott had a son, his name was Herbert Walker Little Herbert Walker, he was his love Messing with the skull and bones, Illuminati on his own A little oil money on the side And he got involved with this new thing called the CIA But it was this troublemaker named JFK And when it comes to your liberties, the CIA is reckless That's what JFK thought, homie got a death wish They should win silverback, greenbacks, Federal Reserve And the Bush crack family feeling that Getting ready to check, not in challenge The homie LBJ's gonna get him down to Dallas and then Herbert Walker became the vice president then the press new world order is what he says military industrial complex call out group more war more checks there's a lot of money in complex his son George W said pox I'm next he became the press like his father next up on the mic create a new pearl harbor would be at the same Carlisle group meeting in Washington a few miles before Osama bin Laden's hijack. And of course, U.S. oil and arms companies. There you have it, the promotional video for Jeb and the Bush crime family. This is a stunning true story of elitism, privilege, ambition, fraud, intelligence, assassination, child trafficking, adultery, and drug trafficking. The true story of the Bush dynasty. You can get your copy now for Christmas at the InfoWars store. It was written by yours truly and St. John Hunt, the son of the legendary CIA agent. This is a satisfying read for anyone interested in American politics and the truth about an American criminal political dynasty. I'm Roger Stone. We're back on the war room with my colleague Owen Schroyer. Owen, is it not amazing to you the way the Mueller-Trump takedown is being exposed at all levels as the partisan wrecking crew, as the left-wing hit job that it really is? It's falling apart on them before our very eyes. And vindicating all of our reports once again. I mean, you look at these texts from Peter Struck Stroke. And it's like, you can't be any more biased. I mean, he doesn't think anyone, he thinks that Trump should get zero votes. He's meeting with Andrew McCabe uh, inconspicuously as well. You've got the ties in now directly with Fusion GPS, the Obama administration and the Clintons. I mean, th this has reached unprecedented levels to the point where now you've got these congressmen on the Hill questioning Rosenstein about it. You've got DeSantis. You've got Gowdy, you've got Jim Jordan, you've got Gates. I mean, people are raising an awareness about this. Orrin Hatch was busy uh, talking taxes today, but he's brought awareness to this. I mean, uh, Chuck Grassley. So this is not going to go away. They're going to have to address this. And while I was listening to these testimonies today, Roger, something hit me. And I, I want to hear your thoughts on this because I know that we've had very outspoken, uh, we've had very outspoken discussions on Jeff Sessions before. I'm, but, but hearing this today, this Russian investigation, this Russian probe, this Russian collusion probe, and everything that it has wound into and, and, and this storm that's been built out of it has been so toxic, so honestly probably illegal and perhaps even treasonous that I'm starting to think now that the reason why Jeff Sessions recused himself is because he wanted so far away from this thing, he didn't even want to smell it, he didn't want to touch it, he didn't want to have to look at it, he didn't want people bringing it to his office, questioning him. 
I, I mean, I, I know that we're demanding Sessions do something, and I still am. I still think we need that second counsel to investigate the dossier, to investigate Uranium One, to investigate this special counsel. But what are your thoughts? I mean, do, is there a potential that, that he recuse himself just because he knew the, the toxicity of what was going to happen here? Uh, it, it's hard to understand, Owen. I guess my question is, watching... Rod Rosenstein today tap dance before the House Judiciary Committee. I can't figure out how Rosenstein, a crony of Comey and Mueller, indeed, I called them the three amigos in a piece I wrote not that long ago, how he ever got appointed in the Trump administration. How is it that Rod Rosenstein, a liberal establishment Republican, best friends with Comey and Mueller, is in the number two, de facto, the number one position in the Trump Justice Department? Uh, it boggles the mind. But when I researched this, I found that he had been recommended for the job by none other than Reince Priebus, the former Republican national chairman, and the first Trump presidential White House chief of staff. And where did uh, Mr. Priebus get this recommendation, you ask? From Elijah Cummings, the Democratic congressman from Baltimore. This makes no sense whatsoever. But now, Mr. Rosenstein is the de facto Attorney General of the United States because Jeff Sessions is an absentee landlord. Well, we may be looking at a situation here where Rosenstein and Mueller essentially, perhaps unwittingly, were put on the chopping block, whether it, you know, by Priebus or by Trump, because this is all turning back on them. I mean, you can't deny the text in the, the, that Peter Strzok was sending that, that indicates McCabe was meeting there, too. I mean, it shows their clear bias. The entire team is anti-Trump. I mean, this isn't even up for debate anymore. They can't even deny that the text and the things that are being revealed are true. I, I just I don't know where it goes next. I mean, again, until somebody moves to investigate the council or to investigate Uranium One, where their names get put out there, I mean, this thing is just going to continue to unravel to more unprecedented levels, I feel. Well, look, thank goodness for Trey Gowdy and Jim Jordan and Ron DeSantis and Matt Gates. These guys are fearless. Uh, they are not part of the Republican establishment. They're free thinkers, uh, and they are leading the charge uh, I'd have to add Chairman Nunes to that. But Mr. McCabe simply refuses to show up. How brazen is that? You're on The War Room. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're on The War Room with your hosts, Roger Stone and Owen Schroyer. And joining us now is California attorney and longtime libertarian and Republican activist, Tyler Nixon. Tyler has been looking into Mr. Mueller uh, and joins us now from Denver. Tyler, welcome to the War Room. It's good to be with you, Roger and Owen, as always. So uh, what do you make of this waiver that the Justice Department refuses to disclose that evidently Mr. Mueller signed with the uh, with the U.S. Justice Department. Now, the waiver, you're, are you speaking of the, the conflict of interest um, disclosure that was made by the assistant U.S. attorney? Uh, well, yesterday's Politico uh, reported that yeah, Mueller yeah, signed yeah, yeah, yeah. No, some kind of waiver yeah, pertaining to right. Wilmer Hale. Well, what it is, How do you uh, read that? As, as I had said to you, as I had said uh, previously, last in fact, last appearance with you all, there was supposedly a conflict of interest check with Robert Mueller, and as I as I understood it, the way it had been phrased in the media, it was only extended to Wilmer Hale, the law firm at which he was uh, he retired to, effectively became a rainmaker, you know, one of these white shoe firms, um, and that 
those were the only connections they mentioned that the Trump family are also clients of Wilmer Hill. And uh, they cleared him there. But I said, said that, you know, this, is, this man's been in government for 30 years. Those are the connections and the conflicts that matter. Uh, there's this assumption that because you work within government, that there's no, and you're a, a Robert Mueller, a Rod Rose, that there's no partisanship. And that's an absurd, ridiculous proposition. There are plenty of, there are hundreds and thousands of attorneys in Washington, D.C., for example, who haven't donated to Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump or any candidate. And they're clean and they are nonpartisan. They just do their jobs. But of course, in this case, you know, Robert Mueller's 30 year career. And everything he's done was never even considered. This wait, it wasn't a waiver. It was you know just essentially a sign off, uh, you know, saying that I approve his uh, his uh, you know placement as a special counsel. And there was no. I mean, this was literally like the day after it was announced. So I mean, what kind of thorough review could have been done on Robert Miller? Number one, and there wasn't one within his thirty year career in government. As if that just doesn't matter. No conflicts there. Um, and then also the fact that. Uh, it was, you know, it was done so quickly. It's like there's no way they did a proper check. And, they, and even if they did a proper check, what are they going to check? Because they believe themselves to be nonpartisan within themselves. I mean, this Peter Straw character, these texts are, oh, my God, this is just beyond. It's, it's, I'm flabbergasted at what, what this man was right. But you know what? It's what we suspected all along. It's what we've known all along. And Mueller put these people in place. He himself has questionable ties. And, and or questionable, uh, not ties, I would say, but you know, he was the FBI director. There's a lot of things that were partisan issues where he took a position that regardless of whether he says, you know, he was following the law and as Rod Rosenstein is today, gives you the spiel about, you know, this is the, just the straightforward objective G man, which even Comey couldn't hold together in testimony. Um, but you know, that's what they give you is, is that type of testimony. But the reality is that they are partisans in the sense of policy, particularly. And unfortunately they've taken their power to the degree where, you know, they view themselves as, a, as the law. Whatever they do, it's fine. And unfortunately, they were co-opted by the uh, Clinton cabal, the Clinton crime machine, uh, really is what it is. And hopelessly compromised, Roger. You cannot unbake the cake legally. You had people within that organization, within the special counsel's investigation, who have permanently and irrevocably tainted it. It has to be dismantled. It has to be started over, if anything. But it needs to end here and be brought in we need to bring in the investigation of Uranium One. And, you know, the people, Rod Rosenstein, for example, was the uh, was a U.S. attorney and, you know, involved in the investigation of Uranium One because he was out of Baltimore and the, <clears throat> the company that was involved in the, the racketeering and the bribes and the kickbacks, 10M USA, was out of Bethesda, Maryland. So presumably it fell within his jurisdiction. Well, you know, he declined to do anything about it. There was no prosecutions. They muzzled the confidential informant. And this is all related back to the Clinton Foundation. And then, you know, of course, we, it's, it's almost really too much to, this is the, this is the Clinton-esque way. They complicate things beyond belief. They create complexity to where you're trying to unpack it. It's so diabolical and complex, it's almost impossible to get to the bottom of it. But thank God, I think the way it's been done this time is so brazen and so just belligerent, really, and so anti-democratic and just despicable that they can't get away with it. And I hope this is their ultimate downfall. I always knew the Clintons were headed for a major downfall. <clears throat> and let's hope that this is the uh, straw that breaks the camel's back. Uh, now, you looked into Mr. Mueller's uh, bar status preliminarily. What did you find? Well, you know, he's a member of the State Bar of California, as am I. And, you know, the bottom line is that uh, when you become a federal prosecutor or a federal attorney, uh, you effectively sort of leave the auspices of the state bar, as I understand it. Um, so what happens is if someone like that, a special counsel, goes on to inactive status. So he's not subject. They, I, I, and this makes sense. I believe this should be the case. That, you know, federal prosecutors, federal uh, appointed attorneys, you know, sworn, sworn attorneys for the government are not subject to uh, – bar ethics per se on a state level, because, you know, you can't have that. You have people filing disciplinary complaints against prosecutors across the country, left, right, and center, and many of them probably righteously. So, you know, he's basically went into inactive status, so his license is, you know, properly maintained in California. It was concurrent with his acceptance of the appointment. Um, you know, the other thing I like to say is, I mean, basically, you know, government attorney like Mueller, he has no other. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible. The, the actual special counsel regulation 
uh, which I've read over as well, is a regulation within the Department of Justice says it has to be a, a, an attorney from outside, or it doesn't even say an attorney. It, it doesn't have to be an attorney, as I understand it. I mean, it doesn't say that. Of course, it's going to be. But they have to be outside of government. Now, that doesn't mean you just left the government, you know, a 30-year service, and you're just called back within a couple of years to come to the rescue of your buddy who took your place as FBI director. I mean, this is like, it, it, it flouts the actual regulation itself, the fact that it was done this way. When they say outside government, they mean someone who is independent even of the government, because if you're a special counsel, you're investigating internal, usually. Uh, conflicts of interest can't be resolved. So you want someone outside that system. They took the ultimate insider, uh, Bob Mueller, and stuck him. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, everything they've done about this has been rigged from the beginning. You know, each one of those things, each one of these little anomalies, these little, uh, you know, fix-ups that they put together, in and of themselves may not, uh, you know, indicate anything specific. But in totality, though, it's just, it's just a scam. I mean, it really is. It's a complete scam, and it needs to be dismantled. And the further it goes, the, the more it risks the constitutional crisis, but not of the kind that Democrats uh, would have you believe. You know, I, I have just uh, been informed uh, that Drudge has posted a link from Vanity Fair that reports that I am writing a book on the fall of Trump. Incorrect. What I said was, if the president is taken down in a coup, an illegitimate coup, I would write a book called The Unmaking of the President. I have begun talking about this and keeping notes for such a book. So I want to clarify this is something I will do if they sack our president illegitimately. But I am not writing a book called The Fall of Trump. I don't know where that name comes from. But I will write a book on how the quizlings in the Trump administration are plotting against him in a 25th Amendment play. I'm glad we had the opportunity to uh, clarify that. Uh, we are going to take your calls later on. That number, 1-888-201-2244, right here on The War Room. And while you can, go to the InfoWars store now for all your Christmas shopping. I'm Roger Stone with Tyler Nixon and Owen Schroyer, and we will be right back. Welcome back to the War Room. Owen Troyer, Roger Stone, our guest, Tyler Nixon. We're about to take some of your calls. Again, we are talking about the totally biased Russia-Trump collusion probe that has now been blown out of the water, not even falling apart at the seams, completely blown apart at the seams. Uh, and real quick, before we go back to Roger Stone, I have to remind you about big specials right now at InfoWarsStore.com. In fact, not just big specials. Christmas week specials. That's right. We're going beyond Black Friday, beyond Cyber Monday, Christmas week. Not one day of great savings, but an entire week of great savings because, after all, it's Christmas. So we're going to make Christmas about Christmas again. And with Christmas week, we have huge savings at InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, next Monday, we'll be doing the Christmas Spectacular Extravaganza, a 34-hour broadcast that starts with real news, December 18th at 8 a.m. and concludes at the finish of the War Room Tuesday 19th at 6 p.m. Of course, you'll be hearing from Alex Jones throughout that broadcast. And that is made possible by your support at InfoWarsStore.com. We've got the introductory rate of cell force, 50% off. 50% off knockout, survival shield, vitamin mineral fusion. Alpha Power, a new product, Prostagard, all, just all kinds of 50% off specials right now as part of Christmas week at InfoWarsStore.com. Silver Bullet is on sale, Brain Force, InfoWars Life Select Storable Food, and of course, free shipping store-wide as part of Christmas week. Free shipping, folks. Big, big savings at InfoWarsStore.com. You've got the InfoWars Store e-gift card to take advantage of as well, so... Please check out InfoWarsStore.com, shop with the good guys, help us expand into 2018. This is a big season for us to continue our expansion as we are building new studios. Alex Jones has plans for the future, but it's only possible with you supporting us at InfoWarsStore.com. So today, Roger, as Rosenstein is getting questioned on the Hill, he gets asked the question directly. 
Do you believe that there is cause to fire Robert Mueller because of a bias investigation, because of clear partisanship? And he says no. I don't see how that's, I mean, clearly there's cause. I mean, clearly there's bias here. He can't even admit it, though? You know, Owen, I don't think uh, the removal of our president is inevitable. But if that clip does not wake him up, what will? The president must reject the happy talk that he's getting from his lawyers and the White House staff. Mueller is a is a hitman for the establishment. He has played that role for both the Clintons and the Bushes, and he now has his sights set on the president. Uh, you know, this, uh, as it is unfolding before us, the text messages, the 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 campaign contributions to Democrats, the stunning activities of FBI agent Strzok, this has to be a book. And I will write a book if our president is taken down in an illegitimate coup, because this has to be legitimized. There is one man who can save Donald Trump. That is a Donald Trump. He's a fighter. He's a brawler, he's a scrapper, and he has to wake up to the the deep enmity that the uh, deep state and the two-party duopoly has for him. He has to wake up before it is too late. I say these things not out of criticism, but out of concern. He pulled off the greatest political upset in American history. And now the very people he beat at the ballot box seek to redress that and to reverse the results of the last presidential election. It is nothing less than that. Tyler, what do you think? Well, I think behavior and criminal behavior in particular that goes incessantly unpunished is going to be not only repeated, but then advanced and escalated. The president's attorneys are not lacking, I'm sure, in you know wits and knowledge and smarts and good lawyerly manners and courtesy, and they lack completely lack political sophistication. You, we are dealing here with ruthless, megalomanic, sociopathic, if not psychopathic, uh, People who are intent on burning, they don't care. They would rather burn this country down than see it controlled by someone else or see themselves not in control of it. So, you know, this is exactly why uh, it's just, it's so, it, I, it, myself, I'm not, uh, I'm politically savvy and, and understanding. I know, know enough, but I mean, they blow my mind in terms of the layers of diabolical uh, internecine, sophisticated, complex plans, as I mentioned earlier with the Clintons. They are just, I mean, it's almost like they just operate inherently and reflexively out of, like, evil. I'm sorry, it just is. They are so, and, and, they just and are hatred. degenerate. They do not care about uh, anything whatsoever except their own self-service and their own grand, uh, aggrandizement and glorification. And there are plenty of people who have careers at stake and who have taken it seriously. I don't think Robert Mueller is an evil person, but I think he's woefully in the cloister of his federal government, uh, sort of you know, thinking he's doing the right thing potentially. But he, you know, he's, he's ignoring so much that I, he's compromised. I mean, even if you don't think he's evil, he's made very evil choices in terms of uh, you know, the ultimate result, which would be a coup d'etat in the United States. You know, John, it reminds me so much, Roger, and you know all about this, of what they did to JFK. I mean, you look at how they tried to foist operations on him and tried to really take him down initially with the Bay of Pigs and get what they could done. And then they proceeded to try to begin undermining him until finally in the third year they're like, we have to kill this guy. You know, we cannot, he, we can't stop him. And I really fear, I mean, you know, Donald Trump couldn't be more different than John F. Kennedy in terms of style and so forth. And, you know, Kennedy was very literate, poetic almost. Trump is a, is a brawling populist. But they, they basically represent the same thing, which is a major and uh, intrinsic and existential threat to this whole system that has been layered on one on top, layer on top of another to rape the American people, to destroy constitutionalism and our republic as we know it, and to install a permanent welfare, warfare, police state, essentially controlled by a, an elite class of you know, largely Democrat uh, politicians, but there's plenty of Republicans in there as well, uh, involving you know, royalist families and 
heredity. I mean, you look at, I just looked at Debbie Dingle, John Dingle's daughter's a congressman. Conyers, after 52 years, going to give up his seat to his son. I mean, or whatever it is, whichever member of his family had several members vying for. I mean, this is like, this is twisted and perverse. And I'm glad that it's coming to a head as we know it under this president. It's, you know, I think he's one who can buck up, but and, and bear it and you know, take us to the finish line because if we don't push this back, we will lose it all. Uh, and, you know, I thank God for InfoWars, certainly, because you think about what a few key voices, the Patriots, the, you know, the Paul Revere's and then the George Washington's who have really stood up and been willing to take the hits, the horrible hits, Alex Jones in particular. I mean, this man is so maligned and horribly defamed and treated. It, it's just sad. I mean, this, the, he has he has been the, I, I can't thank him enough as an American for what he's done for our Constitution just to keep the flame alive against these ruthless people. Um, and, you know, the president, if he can get good counsel around him, it's very frustrating, Roger, as you know, when we have t- uh, talked, to see him so poorly advised and being sort of walked, as you say, sleepwalked to the gallows. Um, I hope he makes some better decisions in the new year. I certainly stand ready, you know, to do anything. If he ever called me up, I'd give him, and Roger, he really ought to have you in right off the Oval Office. And, you know, General Kelly can stuff it. You want a political advisor as well as a, uh, you know, in his case, you want a political advisor as well as a an official, formal, whatever, chief of staff. And uh, if the president gets the right advice and makes the right moves, the Democrats have exposed themselves. I mean, I just can't imagine how much more compromised the whole thing can get. Russia, special counsel, all of it. But he's got to do it right, or they'll just take him out before he can ever make it. And that's what he did with Kennedy. So let's hope they don't do it to Trump uh, and politically assassinate him where they physically assassinated John F. Kennedy. Well, I think you're absolutely right. I'm not denying that his lawyers are not able attorneys, but this is a political proceeding. It is not just a legal battle. Uh, they will use any trumped up charge, any illegitimacy. Uh, this is a fraudulent political mock trial. You need somebody who understands the law and politics. And I don't think the president has that today. Uh, so let me thank you, Tyler Nixon, for joining us here on The War Room. Thank my colleague Owen Schroyer, the ever dapper Owen Schroyer. Uh, and thank the Info Warriors for visiting the Info War store now for all your Christmas shopping. Help us help you. Help us finance the exciting expansion that Alex Jones has planned for Info Wars. If you like the War Room, if you like our 10 hours of daily programming, go to the Info Wars store and give us your support. Thank you for joining us on the War Room.